So models are going to be one of the best parts of software development for new developers. And that's because models are arguably the most important part of your application. They're the bedrock. They are the actual thing that your whole entire app is going to be about. But at the same time, they're actually one of the simplest things in software development that you could actually design. And in the introductory for this video, I told you that we're going to be building a Pokemon review API. And one of the things that we do when we first start thinking of our app is we start actually thinking of the models. So one of the slang terms in software development is you start thinking of the nouns for your app. And the best way to do this is to start, once again, think of the nouns that you are going to be manipulating in terms of the data, in terms of creating data. What is like the whole entire application going to be about? Are you going to have things like users? And this is almost more of an art than a science, but I will go ahead and just give you the answer. The models for our application are going to be Pokemon and review. And that's because the whole entire idea of our app is a Pokemon review system. And how did I actually come up with that? Uh, simply, I just thought of like the actual nouns. And this is actually one of the fundamental forms of abstraction. If you don't know what abstraction is, Breaking an app apart into nouns, as it's sometimes called, is a form of abstraction. And we just abstracted away of some of the complexities of our application. Our app is going to be a Pokemon review system and the fundamental pieces of data that we are going to be creating, updating, deleting, are going to be Pokemon reviews. And we're also going to have users down the line but that is going to come along when we actually start talking about security. But let's just talk about our Pokemon and our review for now. So sometimes they're called models and sometimes they are called POJOs. A POJO is slang or it's an acronym for plain old Java object. And a plain old Java object doesn't really have any complicated code. The only thing that it has is this, and it also has these things called getters and setters, which we will build here in a second. We will manually add getters and setters, but really what you're going to be doing in the real life is going to be using something called Lombok, but we'll talk about Lombok later. So this might be confusing to you. You may be wondering, well, you know, what does this actually do, Teddy? What models, POJOs, whatever you want to call them, nouns are going to do is they're going to represent database tables. And if you don't know what a database table is already, I'd highly recommend you take a, an introductory course to Postgres or some type of SQL course. But a database table is simply an Excel spreadsheet on steroids. That's all databases really are. They're just really fancy uh, Excel spreadsheets that you can tie together in the full in uh, relationships. But let's not talk about that for now. Let's just talk about how does a model relate to a database table. And if you look closely right here, when we actually create this model and we create our database, which we'll do in a little bit, don't worry too much. It's going, this actual model is going to be modeled into a database table. So look at this, we've got ID, this is the ID got the name, got the name, the type. And these parts right here actually represent the columns in a database table. So um, if we were to add any type of Pokemon, let's just say we were going to add Pikachu, what's going to happen is that this model is going to be filled up with Pikachu data. And this can come in many forms, but when we actually insert into the database, this model is going to be almost like the blueprint for when we insert objects into our database. And Java handles all of this for us. We just literally have to write simple code, but when we actually insert stuff into the database and it comes in the form of an object, our model is going to be the object that pretty much fills up our database with certain types of data. And that is the whole entire idea of a model and why they're so important 
and what they are modeled after. And now we need to actually put key our fingers to the keyboard and we're gonna go in here and we're actually going to create our own models. So we have, this is a totally blank project, but what I am going to do is going to drop down this Java right here. I'm gonna go into Calm. I'm gonna go into Pokemon Review. Then I'm gonna go into the actual API and I'm going to create this thing called a package. And if you don't know what a package is, a package is essentially just a folder in Java. It's a fancy word for a folder. And we're going to go in here, we're going to right click, we're gonna go into new, Java class. Then we are going to create our very first Pokemon model. And we're just gonna call it Pokemon. You could call it Pokemon entity if you want to. Um, I would stick to that or just calling it regular Pokemon. We will call the user model user entity because they will, we don't call it an user entity. There's conflicts, but right now let's just call, let's just go ahead and make our Pokemon class and worry about the user later. So first thing we're gonna go in here and create our pretty much our database rows or our fancy Excel spreadsheet rows. So we go in here, we're gonna go private string. We're gonna go string, we're gonna go name. Then we're going to go private string again, and then we're going to give this a type. So we could go in here and we could create our own getters and setters. And let's just actually create manually our first getters and setters on our own, just to understand what they look like and get a little bit of repetition, get a little bit of repetition going on. And we'll create our first getter and setter. And you need to create getters and setters for each property. But the good thing about IDEs is that we can automate this, but we'll just type out a couple of manual ones just for the heck of it, because sometimes it's good to just type things out and do them manually at first because it helps solidify the actual knowledge. So the reason that we use getters and setters is because of encapsulation. It's not good to be able to directly manipulate our variables like this. That's the reason that we call them private and that we have these things called getters and setters down here. So getters is going to allow you to actually go get the data in other parts of your app. If that's not making a lot of sense right now, it will in the future, so just don't worry about it. Then we have our actual setters, which are going to set the data, which will fill up our model and allow us to actually populate a database. So when we go to actually populate our database, we'll just have a nice object and it will fill up our database for us and it won't be as complicated as typing all of this out. But good thing for us is that what we can do is we can just go down here, we can right click, we can go to generate, we can go to generate a uh, constructor, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a constructor. <clears throat> then what we're going to do is we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go generate. Then we're going to generate getter and setter, just like this. And we can uh, generate all of these getters and setters without having to actually type all that stuff out because it can be very repetitious. But what is even better than that is we have this thing called Lombok, which will do all of this for us by just going up here and typing in data just like this. And if you don't know what Lombok is, is it generates all of our getters and setters for us so that we don't have to do it and go in here and actually type in generate. We can just put this data annotation at the top and it automatically generates everything for us. And it also does other, other things as well too. So it generates getters for all fields, a useful uh, to string. It also has, um, a, also generates a constructor. So getter setter required our constructors and also a hash code. Don't worry about the hash code for now. Well, uh, that's something you could kind of research on your own, but just remember that data does all of that stuff for us so that we don't have to actually worry about it. So let's go into our review class and let's actually do the exact same thing. So we're going to go in here. We're going to go private and let me see the actual, um, what we typed out before. So we have an int ID, we have a string, we have a title. I'm gonna drag this over here so that I can, I can actually see it in type. I'm gonna go private, I'm gonna go int ID, private int or uh, string, so private string title, 
private string content, private int stars. And that is going to be our review model. So we're gonna go here and we have data from Lombok and that's going to handle all of our models. And that is pretty much it for our models. We will have to hook up some other stuff later, but for now, I think that's enough. And that should get you going to actually understand what's going on with models and how they actually work. Anyways, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.